Okay, here's what we're going to do today. I have a OBS um, studio that I do my streaming from, and I basically just want to revamp it. I want to create some neon effects in it and uh, just change it up a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're just going to create a new title um, for the stream, and I'm going to give it an animation, and I'm going to use like a, a neon effect. I'm going to use the Saber plugin, and then it's going to just have some flicker to it, make it kind of look like a neon light. Um, and to do that, we are going to uh, use Adobe After Effects, make sure there's a transparent background, and then uh, render it and export it. So the first thing we want to do is go to New Composition, and I'm doing 1920 by 1080, uh, frame rate of 30, and duration. Um, we can go ahead and change that. Let's just make it 10, and hit okay so here we go here's our blank scene so we need to create a new text layer so at the top go ahead and hit layer new text and I am going to type my text in grim stream looks like I still have transparency on that's right here you can see my mouse uh, go ahead and turn transparency grid off just so we can see it for now and I'm going to move it, center it, stretch it a little bit, not like that, kind of like that. I want it to be taller. Okay, that's what I want my text to look like. So now we're going to add the effect to it. Um, over here on the right hand side is where you can look up your effects and presets. Like I said, this is a plugin, it's a free plugin called Saber. Uh, links in the description. Click on it, download it, uh, extract it, and then just click the file and it will automatically install into your uh, Adobe After Effects. So to get to it, we just in the search bar type in Saber. It's the first one that pops up. There it is. We need to we need a layer though to drag it to to put it on. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer and that is going to be a solid. Either go layer, new, solid, or control Y. And we will call this neon, because that's what we're going to be doing here. And the uh, background is just going to go ahead and be black. Hit OK, and then it covers up our text. That's fine. So now where we search Saber on the right-hand side, just click, hold, and then drag it across the screen over to your, new, uh, your solid layer there. And there we have it. There's our neon. So now we need to make this neon uh, go around our font. So to do that, we're going to um, over here on the left hand side where it says customize core, click the arrow, the drop down arrow there, and the core type, we're going to change it to text layer. And then for your text layer, you need to tell it which layer to look at. And it's going to look at the uh, text we typed in, which is grim stream. And there you have it. That is our neon now going around our letters. We no longer need that text layer um, to be visible, so we'll go ahead and click the eyeball on that text layer just to drop it off there. But now we're going to change the preset for the Saber. There's plenty of different presets you can uh, pick to change what it looks like. Uh, for example, here's what Arc Reactor looks like um, if you want to use that. But we're going to do Neon. So we'll go down the list here, click on Neon, and we're going to change some settings here. First of all, I need to change the color because this is not the color I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with uh, something that matches my stream. 55, F, 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 F. Hit OK. Then I want to change my glow intensity. Let's go make it 40%. That looks pretty cool, kind of bright. Uh, glow spread. Let's see, 1.5 maybe. Nope. 0 0.8. Yeah, I kind of like that. So we'll make that 0. Point, I made that uh, 0. 0.8. 0. 0.8. What's going on here? All right. Glow spread. 1.5. And then we'll make our glow bias. So my glow spread is 1.5. My glow bias, 0. 0.3. Okay, there we go. 
and then uh, core size. I want it to be a little bit thinner. I'm going to make it 1.5, see what that looks like. Maybe 1.75. Okay. And I want to go back up to my glow spread, see what 2 looks like. Nope. Let's see what 1 looks like. A little bit brighter. Okay, I like 1. And that is our like glow glowy neon look. So now we need to go ahead and create the uh, flicker effect that we want to use. Um, so first of all, we just come down to uh, here in the uh, same panel down below. It says flicker. Hit the drop down menu and our flicker intensity. I'm going to make my intensity 80%. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my flicker speed 30%. And uh, when we play it here in a minute, we'll see what that looks like. We can always come back and adjust it. But I want it to flicker on in the beginning, and then I want it to flicker off in the end. So to do that, we need to, uh, I'm going to do that by changing its opacity from 0 to 100 in different levels. Um, so go ahead and click on your neon layer, or your uh, whatever solid layer you dropped your Saber preset onto. Have that selected, and then hit T on the keyboard, and that's going to add an opacity to it. And at the very beginning, see we're already at the very beginning, we're going to go ahead and hit the stopwatch and add a keyframe. So we want it to start at 0%. So there we have it. That's what it's going to start at when this thing first runs. I'm, gonna, I'm zooming in here just so I can do it frame by frame. The third frame in, I want it to start, start basically ramping up. So I'm going to change it to 70%. Fourth frame in, I'm going to go 20%. Sixth frame, 80. Seventh frame, let's go 35. Then I'm going to go ninth frame, 100. Sorry, eighth frame. Let's see, eight from 35, eighth frame, 100. Ninth frame. I want zero again, and then 10th frame, I want 100. I just want a, a blink in there. All right. And so we're going to, basically, I'm going to re reverse this on the back end, because I'm going to run this thing in a loop. Let's come all the way to the back end here. Go to the very last frame. Let's see. And I want to add a keyframe there. It's going to be zero. I'm going to come in one, two, three. And I'm going to put that at 75. Come in a frame. Change that to 20. Come in two frames. I'm going to go. 80, come in another frame, I'm going to go, 40 works for me, they don't have to be the same, it doesn't really matter, so I'm going to skip a frame, go 100, I want another blink in here, I'm going to go 0, come in one more frame, and I'm going to go 100 again, All right, let's go ahead and drag this bar here to zoom back out so we can see the whole thing. Click in here, hit space bar, and it's going to play it. And then there's our flicker in the middle. Maybe I, I think I want it more intense than that. So go ahead and see what 100% looks like for flicker. I have no idea. Okay, that's what I want. And then it's about to hit our the end here, and it's going to do some more uh, flicker end. Going to go through another flicker and then come back on. Okay, cool. So I also want it to do a, like a very subtle slow zooming effect. Uh, so to do that, we're going to add a camera layer. Then we're going to add a null object. We're going to attach the camera to the object, make it a 3D layer, and then we'll make the uh, saber layer also 3D to get like a zooming effect. And we'll also use keyframes to make that happen. 
So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to layer, new layer, actually, sorry, layer, new, and select camera. There's the camera, just go ahead and hit OK. And then we need to add a null object. So layer, new, null object. And I just want to rename, you don't have to, it could just be leave it as null one or whatever. But I'm gonna rename it to camera obj. It's my camera object. And then I'm gonna make sure that layer is 3D. And then I'm also gonna make sure our saber layer is a 3D layer by clicking this 3D box here. And then in the camera layer we created where it says camera one, one, you have this little pick whip, just click on it and then drag it over to your camera object. And now if you look right here in parent link, it is uh, attached to that camera object. So go ahead and click on the camera object and then hit um, P to create a position. You see how you have three positions. Our third position is going to be our z-axis, and that's what's going to uh, zoom in and zoom out for us. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll the player here to the very first frame, and I want that to be zero. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch. We're at a keyframe at zero. And then I am going to go all the way to, I don't know, let's go to three. And I'm going to have it. 25. So, a keyframe there. So, it kind of very subtle zooming effect. And then we're going to come all the way to, let's see, 7. And add another keyframe. It's going to be 25. So, to do that, I'm just going to get this little keyframe button here. Then I'm going to come to the very end. Once again, add another keyframe and that is going to be zero. And then there you have it. Hit spacebar and let it run. And that is what it's going to look like. So the most important thing uh, to make this to make this uh, work for OBS is we need a transparent background. So right here, if you hit toggle transparency glit grid and go ahead and click on it, you'll notice you have transparency on, but you still have a black background. That's pretty easy to fix. So click on your, for me, it's my neon layer or your solid layer that you put your saber on. And then all your uh, effects will pop up. And all you have to do is click on render settings and then select composite settings. Right now it says black. Just change it to transparent. And there you have it. We've gotten rid of that black background. So then to uh, finish this up, all you have to do is um, render it with uh, RGB plus alpha to make sure that transparency stays. So I'll show you real quick how to do that. Go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. Then right here where it says Output Module, it says Lossless. Go ahead and click on lossless and make sure for channels it says RGB plus alpha and that'll make sure it comes out transparent other than the effect, the stuff we want. So go ahead and hit OK. And then I'm just going to click on mine says Comp1 AVI. I want to change it to neon, call it neon sign. Hit save. That's what it's going to be called. And then I will go ahead and select render. And now it's going to crunch the numbers for us. All the ones and zeros works out our little animation. And then we will have a video file we can um, import into OBS as a media source and then just run it in a loop. Um, I, I guess the next one I do from start to finish, I will make the, uh, the outlines like whatever for my video capture for the stream, I'll uh, turn the uh, borders of those. I'm going to make those some sort of animated neon as well. Probably a different color, maybe a darker blue or something. But uh, that'll be the next video. This thing is just about done rendering, and then we'll go ahead and check it out. All right, it's finished. 
So let's open up what we saved. We saved it as neon sign. Go ahead and pop open. There it is. It's not, obviously it's not running in a loop. I got it open in VLC. Cool. Um, actually, I can go ahead and pull up OBS. We can see what it looks like in OBS. Go to the start streaming. Uh, let me show you what my old title looked like. That's my title. It did nothing. Had some background stuff going on, but didn't really have anything cool. Um, so then we'll add the new title by hitting the plus sign here. Going to media source. Um, let's see. Neon sign. You title it whatever. If you even if you even use OBS, hit OK. We need to browse for that file. I called it neon sign. And we want to run it in a loop. So hit OK. There's the sign. I'm going to put it right here. And it's just going to run in a loop and kind of, it kind of goes with the theme I got going on. I got this glitchy stuff in the background, but uh, we'll add some more neon later. Thanks for watching.